And, and, and what you see from this moment of recognition in the mid-1970s onwards, once it has been identified that there is a robust problem of industry funding of continued medical education, a fundamental systemic bias that is inserted into this educational practice, we've seen since then a number of measures designed to try and contain or control the influence of industry on CME content. But these measures, whether they are produced in reaction to the Nelson hearings, in reaction to the Kennedy hearings of the 80s and 90s, or more recently in reaction to the Grassley hearings of the early 2000s, they are largely reactive measures and they take a certain way of containing, whether it's a, per, a dollar value beyond which something is seen as excessively lavish, or whether it is erection of a kind of firewall that is supposed to insulate editorial from sponsored content. They are, none of them actually eliminate the systemic bias, which is the question, why would a sponsor fund a program that does not, in the end, assist their marketing goals. They may fund one program, but why longitudinally would a sponsor continue to fund a set of programs that do not overall benefit their promotional goals? And this is the problem of systematic bias. It's not to say that any one program or any one mech is doing something wrong at that moment in time, but the question is, how is this overall intellectual landscape of continuing education shaped? And it will be a biased landscape.